Welcome back. What's going on? Today we're going to do TriHack P OWASP, the top 10. And we're going to start with Evil Shell or Command Injection. So we're going to demonstrate how you can use the input fields in any website or in any web page to gain a reverse shell. So basically, given, of course, given the fact that the uh, application is vulnerable to command injection, meaning that there is no input sanitization or validation on the server side. So let's say we have a box like that. It, in a real case, it could be um, a search box, it could be a comments, it could be form, whatsoever, any, any place where the user can submit input. Okay, so basically in this case, we have um, a box here where the user can put comments, right? And these comments, because the server is vulnerable and does not validate the input of the user, as you can see, we're, as we're gonna see, um, it will validate everything the user types as a command. Okay, so let's examine the source code. So basically, this is source code given from TryHackMe, as you can see. Um, so it all starts with, um, as you can see, the command string here. The command string is the variable that holds the, the command that we will type here. So basically, command string is taken as a get request from the user and then the value we type is stored in the command string, right? And then try block is opened. And as you can see, everything we typed in the command string is passed directly, right? Via the pass through function to be executed. Other than that, the error will be spit out to the screen. So this is kind of um, I mean, it's, it, is, it is sort of command injection since there is no validation for the command string, okay? And instead of pass-through, sometimes some, some user uses um, eval, which is a function, or some developers use um, exec or shell exec that executes everything these are types. So basically, this is the kind of vulnerable code, right? Um, if we want to patch this code, we would take the command string variable and before we pass it through the function here, we would uh, perform some input validation like we have a, a whitelist. And if the command string, right, doesn't have a number of dangerous characters, then it can be passed by the pass through function. That's how we can patch this code. So how can we take advantage of this? Okay, so for example, if we type oh my, We see here the output is displayed back to the user, right? And this is, this is um, we have two sorts of command injection. This one is not blind, right? This is active command injection, okay? Not blind. The blind command injection when you type something and the output is not returned back to the user. So this is active command injection. As you can see, whatever we type gets executed executed and displayed back to the screen. So what we can do here, as all of you, as all of you know, guys, we can get reversal. So here we can open up command prompt, new terminal, and here type sudo rl grab, and see that lvp4545. Right. <clears throat> So what do we do here? We get back and we try to spawn a reverse shell. So we can use, since the application is using PHP here, we can use PHP reverse shell. For example, we can type PHP dash R and we define variable socket to establish the connection, F so open. And here we type our IP address. Of course, I don't know it. If config we open the listener. Now we get back here and we type the IP, of course. Don't forget the level codes. Um here four five four five and then we put semicolon. And then we execute after we after it connects back to us. We decide what it will spawn. So it's gonna spawn 
reverse shell or bash shell. So here, parentheses, bin bash dash i. I'm gonna look for the end. So I hope it's gonna let me copy it somewhere. All right, another one, three, one here, and we have three. Close it, semicolon, and close the single quote. Let's copy that in case it didn't work. We can copy it, paste it back, and work on modifying it. So the listener is active, submit. And of course, we receive the reverse shell. So basically, from here, we can start do, doing privilege escalation. Now, what matters is answering the questions. So let's jump back to try hack me and answer the questions. So the first one, what is what strange text file is in the website root directory? So here we are in the website root directory. We can type ls, and we can see what is the definition of strange file? So we can see a file dropper.txt. We can take it and we can get back here. Nope. Submit. Okay. How many non root, non service, non daemon users are there? So we got to find a user that's not root, not a service, and not daemon, right? How do you do that? So basically, we can do this. We can type cat etc password. No such file, which is D. Let's see here. So we have here root, daemon, bin, sys, sync, games, man, LP, mail, news. So all of these are, uh, so there is no user that stands out, right? All of these users are connected or tied to a service, daemon, or in the case of root is a root user. So the answer to this question is zero. We don't have a unique user. What user is this app running as? So the user is, as you can see, dub dub data. Very clear and very easy. What is the user's shell set as? So we gotta find the shell of dub dub data. So how do you find this? We look at the user, right? The user is here. The shell of this user is displayed right here. User has been no login. That's why WWData cannot log into any Linux system. It doesn't have an actual user with a, with a password, right? That's why it's no login. It's not uh, a user that, that people can use. So we take this and we answer with this directory or this um, shell. Okay. What version of Ubuntu is running? Let's get back and so how do you find the version of any system, right? We have many ways to find the version, but one way to do that is we type cat broke version. This is one way of doing this. The other way around is um, you name a or we can use um, lsp release a So all of these work in a practical scenario, but in this case, we get the answer with only a version. So we can take from here, or no, this, this, actually we can, this one works, and this one, let me check. This is the output of union dash A. Where here is not displayed. Or this one works. Let's try this. Print out the MOTD. What favorite privilege is shown? So MOTD stands for message of the day okay and the way to find this actually we want we need to find the location of the file most of the time it is in cd etc motd 
not satisfied our directory. So we gotta find something like or let's go to cd etc or use this command find etc um, type file dash name or without specifying the file just type dash name motd the not so nothing let's go to etc Let's look for something. Hmm. So update motd.d. This is interesting. So now cd paste. All right, there is another entity file. So that's why we cannot let's go back there is a hint here saying 00, zero header which means that this one contains the message so we type cat zero, 00 header print f welcome dr pepper makes the word taste better so this is the answer Okay, that was about this. So as you can see, we started with OS top 10 and we're gonna continue down to finish all of these tasks. All of these tasks cover the top 10 OWASPs. So basically we have command injection, broken authentication, sensitive data exposure, XML external entity, broken access control, cross-site scripting, insecure deserialization, uh, components with known vulnerability, insufficient logging and monitoring. So that was about today. Very, very easy, small, uh, easy, short and brief. I hope you find this helpful and see you in the next video.